So we're here with George R. R. Martin. We're going to ask a few yeah. questions. Um, I have several of my own. I've, I've asked some folks on the internet to, to send me some things, and I've sifted the wheat from the chaff, hopefully. And so. we will be having the wheat or the chaff here. Uh, <laughs> let's do wheat. Oh, wheat. Okay. Wheat's good. Yeah. Um, so tell me, what was the most challenging thing for you in pulling this last book together? Oh, boy. Well, I suppose it would be the uh, the what I call the Miranese is not, uh, which I blogged about a, n a number of times on my uh, not a blog, where a number of uh, characters, viewpoint characters, and events come together in the city of Marine, where Daenerys Targaryen has established herself, and figuring out the correct order of those things, and which event should follow which event, and which character should arrive, and what viewpoint it all should be told from. Uh, drove me crazy for a long time. I kept attacking it from different angles and changing the order of arrival and uh, moving things about and trying it from this viewpoint and saying, no, no, it would be better from that viewpoint. And hopefully I finally solved it, but, uh, you know, we shall see. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I had a conversation several years ago with David Morell, and he's written a, a book on writing. Sure. He, and he's got a chapter in there where he talks about the notion that um, Fiction, fiction is autobiography. Um, and, and he doesn't mean a thinly veiled way to sort of retell a personal story, but I think rather that sort of a place someone is emotionally or psychologically at a given time will influence what comes through in some of the fiction. Do you find any credence in that for any of your fiction? Yeah, I find there's a certain amount of uh, truth in that. I, I mean, it's. In some ways, it comes back to the thing you're always getting in, <clears throat> you know, creative writing classes in college and all that, where the where the professors will say, "Write what you know," um, and that's often misinterpreted to mean you should write a thinly veiled autobiography, as as uh, you know, you refer to a, a graduate student in English literature writing a story in which the hero is a graduate student in English literature. Yeah, and it would seem to, on the surface disallow science fiction and fantasy and so forth since none of us are actually barbarians or knights or lords or even peasants. Um, but I think you have to interpret right what you know much more broadly than that. I mean we're, we're talking about emotional truth here. We're, we're talking about reaching inside you to, to make your characters real and uh, you know if you're, if you're going to write about a character witnessing a loved one die, you know, you have to dig into yourself and see, did you, did you ever remember losing a loved one, you know, even yeah. if it's only uh, a dog that you loved as a child or something, you know, tap that a vein of emotional energy. In some ways it's not terribly different from what uh, method actors do or in acting class where they're where they're told to use their own experiences to motivate uh, the character they're playing, whether it's a character from Shakespeare or Tennessee Williams or from, you know, just the latest uh, play to come out this year. Um, and I think there's a great there's a great deal of truth to that. I mean, we 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 observe other people only from the outside. The only person we ever really know inside and out is is ourselves, and we have to. We have to reach into ourselves to, to find the power that makes uh, great fiction great. That's good. Would, would you say then that <clears throat> people are able to resonate or understand or sympathize with your story and your characters because there, there's certain truths that are just sort of part of, you know, being human? Yeah. I, I, I think all great characters, or even good characters, uh, all, all characters that are worth reading about have a, have a certain shared common humanity, as, as we all do. And if they're a viewpoint character, you know, the, the intent there is that the reader will identify with them, at least for the process of, uh, of understanding a story. The reader is literally slipping into their shoes and putting on their clothes, and for that chapter or for that book, it is living vicariously through the through the viewpoint character that the that the writer has uh, has given them now even if that viewpoint character is someone that uh, at a distance they might say i don't like this character i don't approve of this character uh this character does things that i find reprehensible 
when you're actually reading about that character and experiencing and you know hearing that character's thoughts, the world should should make sense. You are that character for a little for a little bit of time, anyway. Yeah. Um, tell me, what do you think the fantasy genre does particularly well or better than other genres? I wrote something uh, which I can't memorize completely here for for. Uh, the Faces of Fantasy, where we had to write a little essay on fantasy to go with our picture in, in that book, uh, Patty Parade, a number of years ago. And I, I've always liked uh, what I said there, which was basically that fantasy, you know, gives us the colors. Fantasy is, is strong emotion and, and red wine and, and dreams and visions. It's, it's life imagined more intensely and lived more intensely, vicariously, as we read about it than, than our own lives. That we, we can experience great loves and great tragedies and do things that we would never do in real life. I mean, it's the whole reason, I think, that most people read, yeah. uh, and particularly why they read fiction. Uh, the non-reader, I, I like to say, just lives one life, while the reader lives a thousand okay. lives. and. Uh, does amazing things, climbs mountains and flies to other planets and explores the bottom of the sea and, you know, loves a hundred women or a hundred men or um, lives and dies and gives birth to children and, and conquers kingdoms and, and all of that. You experience that only in fiction yeah. and uh, <clears throat> most of us anyway. Yeah. Tell me, um, how, do you, how do you think your own writing has evolved? You've been doing this a lot of years uh, from early 90s to today? Early 90s, early 70s, early 70s. 1971. I was thinking from the start <coughs> of the series, but yeah, let's go back to the 70s. Well, you know, as you, as you grow and change, your, your uh, obsessions change. I mean, this is, I guess, goes back to the write what you know thing, the autobiographical stuff. You know, I know people who, uh, who fought in Vietnam, for example, and you read their novels and then they're all about Vietnam, even though some of them are purportedly about combat in the space in a thousand years in the future, and some are actually about Vietnam, and some yeah. are about the fantasy kingdom thousands of years in the past. You can see they're working through these uh, these life experiences that were very important. But ultimately, uh, the writer gets beyond that and, and says, well, now I'm going to write about this other thing that, that uh, concerns me. Uh, you know, you can look at my early stories from the 70s, and uh, there was an awful lot of uh, stories about unrequited love and deeply romantic things, and stories about traveling to distant planets and all that, uh, in which I was working on some of my own issues at the time. Um, but uh, I've, I'm proud of those stories. I'm glad I wrote them. I think I'm a better writer now than I was then, uh, certainly on a sentence by sentence level. <coughs> but also, my concerns have changed. and. Yeah. Uh, Ice and Fire is a, is a much bigger work, and it has, I don't know that I would say bigger concerns, because nothing is more important than, you know, questions of, of love and the purpose of life and existential loneliness are the things I was treating with back then, but it certainly has more concerns, and it, it's working on a whole number of different levels.